everyone, Feedy Hero here, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build that I have for you to show. Today's build is quite a popular one that I've seen being picking up traction around the community, which requires only two things, solar plexus and a middle tree thrown hammer. Well, not just the two, you'll also need one god crest as well, and one two punch shotgun, and maybe the Monte Carlo as well if you wish. With this build, you'll be able to do a lot of damage simply via your melee or your hammer, which will be the main focus point of today's build. And when I mean a lot, I mean some OP damage a lot, to the point of where you can throw it at a named ultra boss and take a good chunk out of their health, or just one shot them with just your hammer. Or if you hate those new champion enemies and strikes or from certain activities, you can end their careers there and there, as long as you have the right buffs up and going. This build will be strictly PvE only, because of the strictness behind it in certain contents, where in things like PvP, you'll need to get really lucky to land your hammer, and also because it's an overkill. You also will need the Solar Plexus mod, of course, to pull off the huge damage, which if you don't have it, you can still make it work, but just not on this level. This is probably one of the best PvE Titan builds for Seasonal Dawn players at the moment, who just love big, juicy, fat numbers while playing with Titans. So if you have a Titan who just wants to one punch around everything in your path, then buckle in as I'll explain everything you need to know from here on out. So for the subclass of today's choice, we will be picking of course the Code of the Devastator for its two perks, Throne Hammer and Warm Flames. Now Throne Hammer is just a Throne Hammer on its own, but Warm Flames can provide an ability damage buff every time you get a kill with your hammer or sealed abilities, and stacks up to 3. With this perk here, it will allow us on its own to use our hammer over and over again with bumped up damage, and with Tyler's War also active, it will also provide us with a health regen, so you're never really going to be slowing down. That, and also it lasts for 19 seconds. Now, 19 seconds is a long time for an ability enhancing perk, which offers us a lot more freeway in terms of activities, where we may get surrounded and can't reload, or pick up a hammer after use. And since you're always going to be surrounded by enemies or such, you can just rely on your melee to keep the buff up and going, which makes the build fantastic for a number of reasons. Although with something this high, you're not going to have a lot to worry about anyways. On top of that, with Worm God Crest, Solar Plexus, and any melee enhancing mods available, this setup will pretty much cover all areas and angles that may put the build at risk, so if you lose your hammer in a skirmish and a big mighty champion enemy charges at you, then it's no biggie. As if you have the right stacks active, you can just punch them and potentially kill them, or use your grenades if you feel like it. For your grenades now, it's best advised to pick either Incendiary Grenades for its wide AoE, or Thermite Grenades for its duration and better group targeting. Fusion Grenades are also a good choice to pick as with Warm Flames active, and at times 3 means you can take on mid-level mages with no threats, but they are only single target focused, which means you can't make full use of stacking Warm Flames easily compared to Incendiary and Thermite when your melee is out of use. Now for the weapons, you're going to want to have a shotgun with 1-2 punch or trench barrel, either one is fine. You can also have the Monte Carlo added into the build as well, so you can get your hammer back quickly, but with passive regeneration of your melee speed, I don't think that will be needed at this point. Having a shotgun with 1-2 punch is probably the best choice for an ideal weapon to use in the build, as you can proc 1-2 punch every time you land a full body shot to your target, and this will stack with burning fists, solar plexus and roaring flames. So not only are you going to soften them up with your shotgun, but you'll also be able to finish the fights quickly there and then. If this sounds good, then this probably is good, which is why if you haven't got a shotgun with one to punch yet, your best bet is to go farm for one via the Moon Lantern, and try to get a one small step shotgun from there. It's easy to farm, has good stats, and goes in your primary slot, which leads your secondary slot to something more suitable for close quarter fights. Your heavy can be whatever you like, as there's no restrictions here, but carrying the tractor cannon would be a good shout for certain tougher enemies. Also mention, make sure you have at least one of your weapon's masterwork to produce orbs, as this build will make full use of the new seasonal mods, taking charge and high energy fire. This is done to provide a damage boost for our weaponry, but also to allow you to play around with the new mods, as they do have their pros and cons with them. For the stats, we've got both our resilience and recovery at a balanced out level of around 50 to mid 50s. Discipline is around 44, which is okay and doesn't need to be improved on anymore, Unless you're wanting to have more grenades freely available to feed into your super via Ashes to Assets mod, or to feed into your Momentum Transfer mod for faster melee cooldowns upon grenade damage, which is what I've went with. Our strength stat is around 63, so that we can get a 51 second cooldown for our melee, 
and this is only at this level if you throw your hammer in a hard to reach area that you can't get back, so slightly faster passive regeneration over time. This is only a backup in my case and probably for your case as well, so if you wish to you can reduce the stat down to 50 to 40 and then place from your stat levels elsewhere where it's best suited. However, make sure if you do this you have perks such as Momentum Transfer or the Enhanced version to give you your melee energy back upon kills. Except from that, if you cover the recovery, resilience and strength stats accordingly, then you should be fine and nearly ready to go. For armor, you will need the Worm God Crest Gauntlet so we can get even more melee damage and pretty much one shot most higher tier adds. You also need to have a solo affinity version so you can slot in Momentum Transfer, however you can get away with not having an exotic piece if you haven't got it just yet or if you're just a new player as the current damage you'll produce will be sufficient anyways. Nonetheless, you won't be able to one-shot most stronger tiered adds, but you can still put up a good fight. Now for the mods, we do have the following. Head, Recovery and High Energy Fire mod. Arm, Strength and Momentum Transfer mod. Chest, Strength and Molten Overload mod. Leg, Recovery and Taking Charge mod. Bone, Concussive Damper. And Hands-On and Solar Plexus mod. Now with everything compacted and set into our tiny but incredibly unstable hammer, what kind of damage can we do with it first and foremost? Well, taking a look at the current gameplay with us in the Tribute Hall, the damage being stacked on most adds varies from 20 to 50 to 100 to 300k in damage, which is just... well, And that's with Burning Fist, Warm Flames and Solar Plexus all active and at max. The Cabal Centurion that we face, which is an ultra tier variant, or usually the name tiered variant, are usually the mini bosses before the main big bosses in game, and tend to not mess around when it comes down to health and damage they have. Usually, when facing them, you would tend to have a hard time taking their health down because of said health and damage they produce, unless you use your super or heavy to finish them. With this build here, I managed to take off at least two thirds of his health with the buffs active, and leaving it only 10% of his own health which is enough for around at least 1 to 2 minis from our end, or even shotgun blasts to the head to finish. The fact that this one crazy hammer and buffs managed to do this much damage to a single add and more, shows how ridiculously powerful the solar plexus mod is when combined with the following mini perks, and how pretty much any enemy you face will be easily one-shotted in a blink of an eye, just like that. With this build in mind, taking on the hero version of content like Menagerie, Nightfalls, Gambit and even the Raid to a degree becomes a hell of a lot easier for you. But wait, there's more. If you have the Solar Singe and Brawler active as well and use this against a endgame boss, you could also pull off the same feat which depends at times. It would either take a proportional chunk of their health out of them depending on what type of endgame boss they are, or take out a good chunk of health out of them to where they will be one super or heavier away from finishing them, but not enough to one shot them. I do also believe this week's Sundial is both Solar and Brawler so you can have even more of a reason to use this build while you're at it. For the two seasonal mods we attach, they will come in handy against the tougher enemies that we may want to weaken if we come across them first. The high energy fire mod provides at least a 20% weapon damage buff that persists until you get a kill with it, which means as long as you don't kill anyone with your weapons while it's active, basically allows you to have an always active damage buff. Thinking about this further, you can use this buff to use against a boss with a flat extra 20% damage increase and then just use your hammer at the adds you face. On top of that, with one two punch, solar plexus, roll and flames, and burning fish all active, you can combine the two to pretty much tackle headlong into bosses with positive effects, as long as you don't die, of course. Now for the downsides, we do have to follow to be aware of. Firstly, in terms of stacking your damage, you won't always be able to stack to max and take off two thirds of a health on all ultra enemies you face. Um, this is usually because of the how chaotic the scenario can be and how your hammer won't always connect to your target even though you have a clear line of sight. With Raw and Flames you'll have a good 20 seconds to go do whatever needs to be done and Solar Plexus provides a flat plus 50% buff to charge Solar Midi damage anyways. The issue now is Burning Fist which only lasts for 4 seconds but stacks to 5 and also where most of our damage to take out most ultra enemies will be originally coming from. Because of that short duration you'll have, you'll have the time it hits accordingly if you wish to pull off these big numbers, which sadly won't always be the case. You can still pretty much take a good chunk of health out of them with just Warm Flames and Solar Plexus active, but not the huge numbers while Burning Fist times 3 to 5 active. Another downside to the build is the income damage you'll receive and hammer inconsistencies. While you're going about and throwing your hammers at targets, 
I've noticed that sometimes if you're not aiming directly at your target, your hammer will outright miss them by a few inches, even though the hammer has aim assist which tends to kick in in the last minute. This isn't a big issue of course as you can run towards it and try again, but in tougher situations where you're being fired upon by all angles and you have your buff going to hit the boss, sometimes it's really not worth getting it back. You can still mop up with your fist to get the buff going until you get your hammer back again, which is a plus in my books, but at the same time there's a higher risk of dying as you'll be more up close to your targets, who may have a certain mechanic to stomp you away or do a large damaging AOB blast. If this is ever the case, make sure you're at least prepared for this and maybe add on the bulwark mod so you can get an overshield upon finishers, or use the elemental reduction mods to help with elemental damage or even the protective light mod so you can receive a damage reduction upon shield break, but only if you have the space to do so. But generally, there you have it, a nice and very powerful Seasonal Dawn Titan build for everyone to give a try and of course love. Hopefully with this idea going I can look into many other methods to fully use the Plexus mod on other gear, which I do have a few in mind. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content. If you dig that type of stuff, the link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.